Are you looking for a new video editor? Maybe you're starting a YouTube channel or you're getting into editing movies. Well, stick around. I think I might have something you'll like today. At the time of recording, I'm using DaVinci Resolve version 16. And I know the first time you open it up, you might get freaked out just by looking at the sheer number of buttons, panels, sliders, and whatever else you see on the screen. Don't worry. What we'll do today is go through the three steps of editing a movie in DaVinci Resolve. So let's get started straight away. Step one, we need to get our media, our movies, our photos, our pictures, our sound, our music, whatever else we want to put in our movie, we've got to get it first. We go to the media tab and navigate to the folder where you've stored all of your material. You can see that I've got a bunch of videos here. I can't take credit for filming this stuff. I downloaded it from pexels.com where I tend to go whenever I need a video to use in my own videos. Now we can drag these clips in one by one into the media pool or Command A or Control A depending on if you're on a Mac or a Windows computer and you can select all of your material, pick it up and throw it into the media pool. You'll get a warning right now from DaVinci. That's got something to do with the frame rates of your clips and the frame rate of your movie. At this moment, I don't really care about this stuff, so I'm just going to ask DaVinci to change whatever it needs to change to get me started. Here are all the clips in my media pool, so I can now immediately go to step two. Now, step two is getting all of your clips into your timeline and cutting them the way they should be. So let's get that going straight away. If you have a look on the screen right now, here is our timeline. That's the bottom right hand. The top is our viewer panel. You can have either one viewer or two viewers. We'll go through that in a second. And here is our media pool. This is exactly the same media pool as we had in our media tab, but now it sits in our edit tab. So getting a movie from our media pool into our timeline is really simple. We simply pick up a clip like this and move it into our timeline. And it's as easy as that. We can press the space bar to play and press the space bar to stop. Now, of course, when we film, we have things that we have to cut out of our clips. So let's do that very quickly. I'm going to take the playhead and move it to around there. And then I'm going to click on the toolbar, this button over here that looks like a razor blade. As a shortcut, you can press B on your keyboard. When you do that, your mouse will change into a razor blade symbol. You can now put your blade on the timeline like this. Click and it cuts. Move it along. Click and it cuts. We now want to delete the first part and the last part to leave only the middle part. So what we have to do is click on the arrow again. That's our select mode or our selection mode. We can also on our keyboard click A as a shortcut. We can now just click on the portion we don't want and press delete on our keyboard. Now a quick note for those of you using Macs or MacBooks. On your keyboard you'll only see one delete key and that's the top right corner which is actually a backspace key. Now, when you're using a Mac keyboard and you press delete, it leaves a space. You can very simply click on that space and again, click backspace to get rid of the space. Not a problem. Now, if, for example, I undo those last two steps. Now, this time, as I'm pressing backspace, I am on my keyboard going to press the function key. That's the FN key in the bottom left corner of your keyboard. Click that and keep it clicked. Click on backspace and you will delete the space as well as the clip. Really useful tip. Let's delete this part afterwards. Let's go and grab another clip. Put it into the timeline. You can see that this clip doesn't have any audio with it. That's okay, we're not dealing with audio today. Let's move our playhead forward. And this time, rather than using the razor blade, what I'm going to do is press Control B or on a Mac, Command B and simply cut it wherever the playhead is. I'm going to move the playhead a little bit forward, Command B or Control B, and you can see that it makes an instant cut. I prefer this method much more than the razor blade. The reason for that is I can actually take my playhead and then using the arrow keys on my keyboard, go very fine into the frames and cut precisely where I want to. Now let's delete those two extra bits we don't need, click, function backspace on a Mac or delete on a Windows computer. Let's do a third way of editing. So let's grab this clip over here, put it into the timeline. And this time, rather than cutting it, what I'm going to do is move my playhead to about 
there when it starts to go up. And with my mouse, I'm going to go to the start of the clip. Now, if you look very carefully, the mouse will change into this symbol. And that symbol tells you that your mouse is near the start of a clip. We have a similar symbol if we put our mouse to the end of the clip, like that. Now, if I take my mouse, put it to the start of the clip, click and drag, you can see that we can shorten a clip just by dragging its start or its end, like this. You'll also notice that whenever you drag a clip shorter or longer, there is a white outline around where your clip used to be. That tells you how long your clip was and how much of that clip you're currently using in your timeline. Find that quite useful. We can click on the space and delete it, or we can simply pick it up and move it. Now, you'll see me clicking and deleting spaces all the time. There is a reason for this because, for example, if we had another clip afterwards and you drag one clip in, you would then have to drag all the other clips. And if you had 20, 30, 40 clips after that space, it would get very annoying. So I tend to just click on the space and press delete just to shift the timeline to the correct place. Now we've got this clip over here. Let's do a really simple Command B, move our playhead to Command B, function backspace on a Mac, delete on a Windows computer. And there we have a really simple edit. You can't hear any sound because I've muted the sound. It's not important today. And that's our very simple edit. I know there's no real story to my timeline, but I hope you can see how easy it is to put clips from your media pool into your timeline, how to cut them and then just move them around a little bit. Now let's look at the fourth way of cutting a clip. And this is done before you even put it into the timeline. So let's do some preparation work. I'm going to go to the top right corner of my screen and click on that button there. That gives me two views. This is my timeline on the right and on the left is any clip I want to edit. I'm going to go to this coupled cycling and I'm going to double click it so it takes this spot here, the preview window, if you will. With my mouse, I'm going to just scrub through up to about there. On my keyboard, I'm going to press the letter I for in. I'm going to forward the timeline slightly and press O on my keyboard for out. So that's an in and that's an out. If I now pick this clip up, it has already been cut in the preview window. And I know that some people will prefer to go through each and every one of their clips and mark their ins and outs. It can really speed up your editing in later stages of making a movie. For now, I don't need the second window. I don't need to preview anything. So let's go to the top right, click on our single viewer again so that we've just got our timeline. And here we have a really rough but really quickly edited movie. Now let's add those small touches that make movies a little bit above average. Let's close the media pool and open up the effects library. We want to add a transition. And for now, we have a wide range of choice for transitions. The most common one used is, of course, the cross dissolve. So let's pick it up and put it into our timeline like that. And we'll grab a second one and throw it down there. And you can see it's quite easy. It's just drag and drop. If we preview this, you can see that it's a classic standard cross dissolve. And it works really well. We also have a way of just going in between two clips like this, wait for the symbol to change, right click and add a 25 frame cross dissolve here. And exactly the same thing happens. We can, of course, choose any other transition, such as the hexagon iris. And we can put that down in between two clips. And it also works. Now, there are times that transitions don't work. And don't worry, in a future video, we're going to tackle just that issue when transitions don't work. Now, also, a fade in and a fade out is a standard effect put on timelines. So let's see how we do that. For this, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. Let's rewind to the start. And if you go to your clip, you'll see a white marker in the top left. Click it, drag it, and you now have a fade in. If we go to the end, we can also fade out in exactly the same way by grabbing the white marker and dragging it inwards. In this case, I've done a very slow fade out like that. And that's also a good way of making your movies a little bit more professional, a little bit more above average. Now, finally, let us just add some text to the screen because that is a really important part of editing movies. Let's go to the titles. We're just going to grab a simple text 
and we're going to throw it on the timeline. Something like this. Now, the cool thing about DaVinci Resolve is once you start working with text, it will treat the text as if it's just any other movie clip. So you're allowed to pick it up and move it. You're allowed to fade in and out. But what you're also allowed to do is click on it, Command B or Control B and actually cut it as well. Now let's of course edit the text because we don't want it to say the word title. There's two ways of editing text. We click on the text. We can go up all the way to the top right and click on the inspector button. But easier than that is to go to the text itself and just double click it and the inspector window will open for you. Let's change that text to something else. There you go. Let's change the font simply by going below and change the font. I'm going to change it to impact. So that's a nice strong font to use as a title right there. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Now what you'll find in DaVinci, one of those frustrating things, if you see a slider and you start to move it around, your adjustments will go everywhere. It's really hard to fine tune that to exactly what you want. But if you hover your mouse over the actual number of the slider, the value of the slider, click and drag, you'll find it's much, much easier to control what size or what position something is. This is one of those tips that you'll be thankful to get because it's really frustrating moving a slider around. So there's my text right there. Let's just see how that looks across all three. Yep. That's looking good. Now, of course, we can change the color of our text simply by clicking on the color panel. We can choose a color at random over here, or you can choose the color picker and find an element on your screen, like the blue in this shirt over here, and change the color there. Now, obviously, we can't see the text anymore, so let's adjust the text. Let's press OK first. Let's adjust the text so that we can actually see the text a little bit better on this scene over here. And we can do that very simply, either by adding a drop shadow. I must say I'm not a fan of drop shadows. Looks a bit old school, so I'm going to switch that off for now. I'd rather just mess around with the stroke, which means the outline of the text. Let's just make that three or four. Four is good. Black looks good. Let's check if that looks good in white. No, it looks better in black, so let's leave it at that. And let's just have a quick look at our text. Yeah, it comes on and it stays there. Let's put a fade into our text like this and see how that looks. And there it comes on. Obviously, my timing's a bit off with the text going on and off the screen. But I think you get the general idea of how to deal with text, how to change font, how to change color in DaVinci Resolve. So finally, what's step three? Well, obviously, we need to get our movie out of DaVinci into a folder somewhere so that we can upload it or so that we can share it somehow. So let's do that right now. We're going to go to deliver. That's our final one. That's a little rocket symbol, which I quite like. And what you'll see here is the timeline that you've been working on, all of your edits, your transitions, your texts, everything have been put into this timeline so that we can now export the movie ready to use later. And the way that's done is really simple. We just give it a file name. In this case, I'm going to call it DaVinci Beginners 1, like that. Choose a location that's convenient for you. There you go. And then choose a format. Now, this video is not going to deal with the sheer number of formats that we've got out there. It's too many to speak of. At this moment, I'm just going to be happy with a H.264 because YouTube will accept it. Make sure you choose the resolution that you want. And then what I'm going to do is add this to the render queue. That's absolutely fine for me. And then you'll press start render. It will make your file into a standalone movie file that you can upload to YouTube or share however you want to. Let's go back to edit and just summarize what we've done today. We have managed to get all of our movies into our timeline from the media pool. We've managed to put our clips into the timeline, cut them four different ways. We've added transitions, a title. We've added fade in and fade outs. And finally, we managed to export the movie using the deliver tab just to get our movie into the format that we wanted to. Now, before we go, it's worth mentioning a little bit about saving and autosave in DaVinci Resolve. What you'll notice is whenever we've edited in this video, you see a small edited sign come up at the top there. What that means is that DaVinci Resolve is telling you you've done something in your timeline, but you haven't saved it yet. Luckily for us, it's quite easy to switch on autosave. For some reason, DaVinci Resolve doesn't have it enabled when you first start. 
we simply go to the settings. We go over to the user settings over here and the project save and load. We then click on live save, which is the DaVinci way of saying auto save and click save. Now what you'll see is every time we make an edit, no matter how small or how big, that edited sign will disappear. What that means is DaVinci Resolve has taken your change and saved it automatically. I highly recommend that you enable this feature because it's going to save you heartache, especially when you've worked on something for hours and you end up losing it for one reason or another. In future videos, we'll talk more about advanced techniques, how to achieve certain things on the timeline and in our movies. But until then, I hope this gives you the confidence to just open up DaVinci Resolve and make a movie. Hey guys, thanks for watching, really appreciate it. Think about clicking that like button, subscribe to the channel if you wanna keep up, and maybe think about hitting the bell notifications if you wanna be notified every time a new video comes up.